Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology and another book Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the upper motor neurons the upper motor neurons concepts of motor system part 6 upper motor neurons the localization of weakness due to neurologic causes the weakness due to neurologic causes may be due to upper motor neuron lesions lower motor neuron lesions neuromuscular junction disorders myopathic disorders or psychogenic disorders so it can be anywhere in this neuro axis upper motor neuron lesions lower motor neuron lesions neuromuscular junction disorders myopathic disorders and psychogenic disorders but what exactly are the upper motor neurons the corticospinal and the bulbospinal upper motor neuron pathways so upper motor neuron con uh, consists of both the corticospinal as well as the bulbospinal upper motor neuron pathways First, let's see the corticospinal pathways, other known as, otherwise known as pyramidal tract. These are essential for the movements, especially for the distal muscles of the upper limb. So, the corticospinal pathways, the upper motor neurons have their cell bodies in layer 5 of the primary motor cortex, the precentral gyrus or the broadband area 4 and in the premotor and supplementary motor cortex area 6. The delicate movements of the face, hand and tongue have more representation in the brain than the less delicate movements of the trunk as represented in the motor homonucleus and the upper motor neurons in the primary motor cortex are somatotopically organized. So the delicate movements of the face, hand and tongue have more representation than the less delicate movements of the trunk. So, the representation in the motor homonucleus is according to the quality and the delicacy of the movement rather than the quantity. Axons of the upper motor neuron then descend through the subcortical white matter and posterior limb of the internal capsule. So, they go to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, very, in, very important. The internal capsule has got anterior limb, genu and the posterior limb. But the upper motor neuron goes to the posterior limb of the internal capsule and therefore only when there is a lesion of the posterior limb of the internal capsule we get hemiplegia. So axons of the pyramidal or corticospinal system descend through the brain stem in the cerebral peduncle of the midbrain, the basis pontus of the pons and the medullary pyramids. At the cervical medullary junction most corticospinal axons decussate into the contralateral corticospinal tract of the lateral spinal cord but 10 to 30 percent remain ipsilateral to the anterior spinal cord. So since most of the corticospinal axons decussate into the contralateral corticospinal tract of the lateral spinal cord, we get hemiplegia on the opposite side. For example, if the left frontal cortex is involved, the right side there is hemiplegia. Likewise, if right frontal cortex is involved, the hemiplegia is on the left side because corticospinal tract crosses at the level of the medulla oblongata and goes to the opposite side about 70 more than 70 to 80 percent cross the then the corticospinal neuron synapse on the pre-motor interneurons but some especially in the cervical enlargement and those connecting with the motor neurons to the distal limb muscles may directly make direct monosynaptic connections with the lower motor neurons. They innervate most densely the lower motor neurons of the hand muscles and or involve the execution of learned fine movements. The learned fine movements. In fact, this is known as manual dexterity. The human being is placed highest in the hierarchy as compared to the animals because of two reasons. One, the way we use, the way we manipulate the fingers known as dexterity and second the language and intelligence because of these two reasons man is placed highest in the animal kingdom in the hierarchy the corticobulbar neurons are similar to the corticospinal neurons but innervate 
brainstem motor nuclei. This is about the pyramidal tract or corticospinal pathways. We have another part, another component of the upper motor neurons known as the bulbospinal pathways. More than the movements, they are concerned with the axial muscles and the posture. Basically, they are concerned with posture. Now, let's see what are the bulbospinal pathways. The bulbospinal upper neurons, upper motor neurons influence strength and tone but are not part of the pyramidal system. The descending ventromedial bulbospinal pathways originate in the tectum of the midbrain known as the tectospinal pathways, vestibular nucleus known as vestibulospinal pathways and the reticular formation known as the reticulospinal pathways. So the descending ventromedial bulbospinal pathways originate in the tectum of the midbrain known as the tectospinal pathway, vestibular nuclei known as vestibulospinal pathways and the reticular formation known as the reticulospinal pathways. These pathways influence axial and proximal muscles and are involved in the maintenance of posture and integrated movements of the limbs and trunk. As we have ventromedial pathways, we have ventrolateral, the descending ventrolateral bulbospinal pathways which originate predominantly in the red nucleus known as rubrospinal pathways they facilitate distal, lump, uh, distal limb muscles. The bulbospinal system is referred to as the extrapyramidal upper motor neuron system. So the bulbospinal is referred to as the extrapyramidal upper motor neuron system which is basically concerned with the maintenance of tone, posture and uh, axial muscles. So these are all the important concepts of upper motor neurons. The other important clinical concepts like history taking, neurology examination, hemiplegia and paraplegia, I have put, I have, uh, put in a book called Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. If interested, this book could be purchased. Very useful book especially for clinical neurology exams. The other important concepts of neurology I put in a question answer format in a book focused neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. This book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. If interested this book could be purchased online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture on the upper motor neurons. If you have enjoyed it please like it, please share the links but please do subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my IP page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you.